Hello everybody and welcome back to Exploration Mode, where today we're taking a look at the Cicero update, which came out as of the day of recording this two days ago. I didn't even realize it was out, if I'm honest. Um, I popped into Imperator Rome just to do a little bit of research on a mega campaign idea that I have, and I discovered that this existed. So, I'm making this now, and probably by the time this is out it's going to be the 27th, so it's three days old, but... Realistically, that's probably still recent enough. So this is the Cicero update for Imperator, and that makes a number of dramatic changes to the core game, letting the player focus on political consequences and imperial governance instead of waiting for numbers to grow, which is a complaint a lot of people had about Imperator, the way that the, in particular, oratory power worked. I can definitely agree with that. Provincial populations can now be nudged towards assimilation, but are mostly autonomous in their preferences. Provinces themselves can be developed along a range of settlement sizes, according to your priorities and wealth. The political and military games have also been enhanced. Advisor loyalty will affect how flexible you are in meeting new political challenges, and balancing the competing factions in your empire will be important in new ways. Your armies must gain experience in order to adopt new traditions, but that might mean risky wars or expensive drilling. In all, Cicero is an attempt to see if new game design ideas can work in one of our favorite settings. Excellent! So these are the primary changes here. Deeper province management. Develop settlements in the provinces, founding new cities, or establishing great metropolises at the center of your empire. That seems interesting, we'll have to see how that ends up working. 17 unique buildings to enhance provincial wealth and capabilities. Population development, migration, and conversion now happen dynamically. Yes, I'm very happy about that actually. Food may be stored in a province and depleted over time. Save grain for a coming crisis or starve an enemy into submission. And that's pretty cool. I like that. Challenging political game. Monarch power replaced by political influence, which I did actually see, and that's what triggered me to make this video. A store of value based on the loyalty of your advisors. Ruler skills now affect national capabilities, not specific actions. Each form of government must consider trade-offs when passing new laws. Republics must consider the balance of their factions, while monarchies risk pitting generals against governors. There's also greater variety in nations. Unique national heritages for each culture, reflecting historic, historic strengths and priorities, even. <laughs> Unique inventions for many nations. New events and flavor interactions, many tied to the nation you're playing. New ways of war, capitalized. Okay. <laughs> Revamped the military traditions available to each culture. Unlock these traditions with military experience, which can be earned incrementally or through combat and peacetime drilling, much like in Hearts of Iron that way. And finally, changes to the AI promote conflict between the non-human controlled nations, making a more dynamic and dangerous world, especially in the end game. Excellent! So let's pop back into the game here, which I already have started a game. As you can see, I'm in my favorite location, quasi-Ethiopia. Ethiopia doesn't exist in this game yet, and uh, there's a whole lot of nothing around here. I decided to play as this nation here, and the reason I did that was because the idea that I have for a mega campaign is clearly Ethiopia. So you start in Imperator, and then you play through Crusader Kings, so on and so forth. But that's really not the point of this. The point of this video is to take a look at these changes that they've made. So I am noticing that they have not increased the amount of manpower that you get in the early game. 66 manpower per month. Yikes! But this is that new political influence right here. We're currently at 100 political influence, and we are gaining plus 1.5 every month due to Chancellor, Royal Tutor, Marshal, Master of the Guard, High Priest, Court Philosopher, Steward Physician, and our Ruler Corruption is not reducing it. So essentially what that's saying is all of our advisors are currently loyal, and let's see here, offices. Here we are. Yeah, they're all at three quarters loyalty. Fantastic. Okay, so what is this here? This is our military experience. It does increase a tiny amount every month, just due to its base. However, it also increases based on our average cohort experience, mercenary reliance, which I assume reduces it, and war exhaustion, which I assume 
also reduces it. So if we look at our army here, we have 3,000 3, camels, or three units of camels, and three units of light infantry, which I'm wondering if light infantry is still as horrible as it was before, and uh, yeah, yeah, pretty much is. <laughs> I am wondering, for the purposes of my later playthrough, if I look at the trade goods map mode. Any iron around here? Not down over that way. Nope. Okay. Well, that's going to be exciting. We're going to be relying pretty heavily on light infantry then. Oh boy. There are, of course, a bad research ratio, blah, 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 unmarried ruler... So, this is a new thing, I think. Or is it just that I never played as something with a ruler before? We can arrange a marriage here, and uh, that should be fine. I'm not planning on playing this super long, so I'm not going to be too concerned about that. We can get an invention, which again, this still works much like Stellaris. Ship damage, starting experience. That might actually be a really good thing now that we have the military experience. Supply limit increase. What is the supply limit around here? Uh, pretty decent, honestly. Particularly in our capital. Okay. Or we could get a tax increase. Tribesman output, blah blah blah. Claim fabrication speed. We're gonna have to look at how all that stuff works. Army morale recovery. I think we're gonna go with that starting experience. Oh, and we can get another another one as well. Where What are we spending on our uh, inventions here? Research points? Oh, we just buy them? With money? Hang on a moment. We just buy them with money? In that case, we're definitely going property tax. They currently cost 10. So... Okay, we'll, we'll take an omen power. We'll also take a supply limit increase. Tribesman output, of course. Import value, yeah, we'll take that. Um, anything else here? Monthly food modifier, that sounds good. And uh, we're spending all the money. I'm not going to spend any more right now, but we can call down an omen. And since we can just spend money on tech, I feel like our best thing to do is to go for... We don't have a tax modifier. We could do citizen output or slave happiness. Freeman output? Let's take a look at our pops. Let's see. We've got one Freeman right now. Freeman mostly output manpower, whereas citizens output research points and commerce value. We do have a lot of citizens. Okay, let's do citizen output. Excellent. Okay, and we can also put in an idea. I'm kind of feeling a civic idea, like national commerce income or slave output. How many slaves do we actually have? We have a few. Actually, we have quite a few. That wouldn't be awful. Let's go for national slave output. And it looks like we can get one in each, but it's going to cost us 20 political influence. So, we can then, for our religious ideas... There is no category for oratory ideas? Oh, right. We can we can choose from anything, but if we want to get a matching bonus, we choose from the correct the correct area. Ruler popularity gain? Loyalty of subject states. I don't think that's very important for us. Civilization level and civilization change, though, that is important. Morale of armies plus 10% is awful nice. I think we'll just grab that. Okay, we don't have a commander over here. We also don't have any families that are upset, so we'll just have this guy be our commander. We also need a navy commander, which I guess is an admiral. And we can buy one more invention. Claim fabrication speed. Let's go for that. Let's figure out how that works now that we don't need to spend oratory power on it, shall we? So if we were to come over here to Himjar, 
Now, we probably don't want to declare war on them because I'm willing to bet that they are stronger than us to start with. But let's take a look at the diplomacy here. And fabricate claim. Okay, it costs political power. Or political influence, that is. That's fair enough. And then we could fabricate on the province of Kataba. Excellent. And how long is that going to take? Who knows? We do need some trade routes, though, so let's go ahead and import some things. What do we want to import? We can't import anything. Excellent. Okay. So let's go ahead and tick forward a month and see what actually ends up happening. I'm liking this political influence system, though. I'm My, my main fear with the political influence is that it becomes a bit too much like oratory power in that it's just used for everything. But the nice thing is military power and the, uh, what was the other one? Religious, po religious power. Those seem to just be gone, which I'm okay with. They kind of didn't really serve a purpose in my opinion. So let's take a look at this and uh, build roads. Building roads just costs money now. 50 gold per province, so that's pretty spendy. That's a lot more than 12 military power, if I'm honest. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, roads are also really powerful, so there's that. I would love to have a fort here. That would be amazing. Of course, we can't build a fort here because we don't have the money. It costs 43. That's pretty cheap, honestly. We're making 1.25 a month right now, so... That's fine. So how do we drill these guys? Drill army. Army maintenance cost increases by 33%. They gain ha they gain 2 and a 2.5%. Okay. Loyalty gain chance minus 1 until canceled. Wait, so they're less likely to become loyal to this guy if they're drilling? I like it. I like it a lot. Okay, let's check it. Check out our economy tab here. Okay, they haven't replaced these buttons with a slider yet. I was kind of hoping they had Europa or Victoria style, but nope, no such luck. Fair enough. Okay. So of course we can't colonize, I think. Can we colonize like over here? No, because the dominant religion of these two locations are not comedic. Now, they will become comedic over time. Yeah, they are slowly converting over. And actually, um, I could change this over to Gregorian, and I kind of feel like I should. Where is that under? Game? No. Wow, this is bare bones. Okay. Province names, quality. Apparently it's just not in the options. We have to mouse over it to see what the Gregorian date is. I thought there was an option for that. Maybe I'm wrong. Anyway, these guys are currently drilling, and you can see that they are indeed gaining experience at a pretty quick rate. This is a lot like the drilling in Europa. I don't hate that, and we're gaining military experience. But we don't gain military experience from drilling directly. We gain military experience from the average experience of all of our cohorts. Which is an intriguing way to do things, to be sure. So the question becomes, oh, hello. Oh, hello. Population capacity increase, slaves needed for local surplus minus five. These settlements are interesting. Local monthly food modifier, local slave output, and then we can also still build barracks and fortresses. I find it interesting that fortresses are the cheapest. 
That's certainly a little on the weird side to me, considering what I know about other Paradox games, where <laughs> that is definitely not the case. Okay, let's pop open the ledger here and take a quick look at what exactly Himjar has got going on. So we'll sort by name. And, uh, where are we? Himjar. Here we are. They have nine total cohorts. So they have a few more cohorts than we do. Okay, should we consider potentially recruiting? Oh, this, this camel cavalry became loyal to this guy. Whatever, that's fine. Should we, actually, hypothetically, this costs... What is that icon? We pay plus two of this. Tyranny. Okay. So we gain two tyranny, I guess? But I mean, we can make friends with this guy, which wouldn't be an awful idea. Okay. So, let's consider building some more units. So that we can invade up here and maybe see how this new war system that they've got going on is working. So let's go ahead and recruit in maybe like a couple of backline units. Because we've got three cav or rather three camels. We've got three light infantry. Now we can't make heavy infantry. We can't make chariots because we don't have the right military tradition. We can't build warriors, which is just heavy infantry. We can make elephants, but we don't have the money. That's interesting. Well, I think what I'm going to say is that we should get a unit of camel cavalry for now. Bring that up to four total. And then, or hypothetically, we could just detach off some cavalry. So like bring this unit of cavalry out and disband this, which was this button. Disband them. And then we can recruit in some two units of skirmishers. And then we'll go up to like five and five. Five, five, and two, actually. So two units of camel cavalry, three units of skirmishers, and... Or rather, five units of skirmishers and five units of archers would be the idea. Uh, we could lose 100 gold. Yikes. 50 gold. 25 gold. Or just say no. And we're going to say no. <laughs> this guy doesn't need a crocodile. Why would he need that? Okay. So this is going to be our fifth unit of light infantry. Oh, hello. We can publicly praise this guy. We would lose 10 political influence for that. We would lose 5 stability. We're currently at 50 stability, and that scales between 0 and 100 nowadays. That was a change in the 1.1 update. Okay. 29 gold, or we could not go crazy. I think let's spend political influence on it. We are gaining a decent amount per month, so that won't take too long to restore. Okay. So these guys are drilling currently. How much are we making? 0.96? Hypothetically, if we're drilling and we cut our maintenance, 1.45, 1.93, 2.66. Okay, so 1.45, and then we stop drilling. And then go back in the economy tab, 0.97. Okay, yeah, that will work fine. We can completely offset the drill cost. Oh, but it's a bug. See that? You can't start drilling when you're on decreased pay. Does it stop drilling? Drill army. They're still drilling. Um, we are at 16.82%. 15.98%. Okay. It stopped on the month tick. Good to know. Good to know. They did think of that. We'll put it back at normal maintenance and continue drilling. The gladiator. Oh boy. Uh, we would lose five popularity. 
and 10 political influence. No, that's too vulgar. We're not going to do that. Also known as, I'd rather make archers. <laughs> okay, so. We are going to fight these guys before the end of this. I don't really care about the outcome, but I'm just bulking up the army right now. Oh, terribly vexatious indeed. That guy doesn't like us very much. Can't imagine why. Um... Hmm. It's hideous. But that's fine. It can be hideous. For all I care. Okay, so. The question now becomes... Should we tax people more heavily? That would increase slave output, but reduce our research points. I mean, we don't really need research points right now. It would be a more important thing if I was planning on continuing to play this for a long period of time. But I'm going to go to harsh taxation, and I'm also going to transfer transaction ta taxation so that we make a little bit more money. Just so that we can make this army faster. Like, if, if this wasn't an exploration mode, if this was a full playthrough, I definitely wouldn't do that. But I want to be able to get this army built a little bit. Okay, so camels are... not camels. Archers are going to be another month. Sounds good. These guys still at nine cohorts? They are indeed. I think we'll be able to take them. Our legitimacy just dropped a little bit because of ruler unpopularity. That's intriguing. Okay, we'll have to keep an eye on that. And we'll go ahead and make another unit of archers. I would like it if I could spend my influence on, like, influencing people to give me money right now. <laughs> that would be nice. Okay, so we're still fabricating over here. How close are we? They have a CB on us. Where do we see how close we are to fabricating? Do we have to look at our own diplomacy? No. Okay. So how do we see how far we are on fabricating this claim? Is that just in here? Oh yeah, that's here. So we're at about halfway. Okay. I'm going to go uh, go ahead and go to speed 5 just for the purposes of exploration mode here. Just so that we can get this combat in before the end of the episode in a, a few minutes here. I'm gonna make another unit of archers. Oh! They declared on us! Isn't that convenient? I was just about to declare on them. Okay, we have triremes. Five of them. They also have five triremes, but their morale is low. So we're taking control of this strait. Oh, hello. There's been an industrial accident. Hmm. Um, we'll compensate the owners, but no, we won't. Seize their property and compensate the slaves? Oh, my. Um, there will be no handouts. A slave is killed. Oh, no. <laughs> Okay. These guys are not hired by them. Okay. There's their troops. We're going to go ahead and walk across, I think. Um, no, we're not, actually. They landed here. We're going to let them walk in. Oh, and our navy lost. Okay, why did our navy lose there? Because I noticed when it popped up that we had much lower morale than they did. Um, let's see here. Maybe it's their... Uh, out of three, their morale was... Out of three. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. 
Well, they have troops kind of trickling in. Or wait. No, they just went to base. We are retreating. Okay, we won that. No doubt about that. Okay, here comes more of them. Oh, wow, look at all this. How many troops are they up to? They're up to 14 cohorts. I think they hired mercs, though. Because, yeah, they have a whole lot coming in. Oh, they have allies. Right. Mayin, Saba, and Kataba are all fighting us. Okay, well, I mean, it's fine. And that would explain why we lost the naval battle as well. I mean, they're just going to keep pouring in. Okay, so, um, <laughs> realistically, if I was playing this properly, I wouldn't have gotten into this situation, but, um, I, I would have built a fort right here early on, and I would have been gearing up the army, and I would have noticed that these were all allied. <laughs> that would have been a thing. This was primarily just research for me to see down here and to see what the changes were. So, it looks like the, the combat system hasn't substantially changed. Which is okay. The combat system was never really an issue in this game. Where are we retreating to? Okay, to there? That's fine. What is their composition, their army comp? Mostly light infantry, a few archers. Fair enough. I don't suppose we can import iron? No, we cannot. I'm not surprised. Well, I mean, we're going to lose this war. There's no doubt about it. But that's not the point. Okay, so they're just marching over there. They're kind of splitting up, actually. We can, we can afford an invention, but I'm not going to. Instead, I'm going to recruit up another unit of archers. Or two. Or maybe three? No, just two. What's our combat width, anyway? <laughs> I don't even know. We'll grab another unit of skirmishers. Actually, we'll do the skirmishers here. Okay. That should help. Probably not enough, though, if I'm honest. This war is pretty much lost. Realistically, I should have noticed that they were coming like this and uh, prepared for it built a fort here instead of spending all the money on inventions. But, you know, live and learn. Okay, they're marching over here. They're chasing us. We're going to have soldiers there, but our morale is really, really low, and it isn't recovering yet. If we had a fort here, this wouldn't be possible. Right? They're chasing us? I'm pretty sure they're chasing us. Can we keep going? They are chasing us, but only with their smaller army. Okay, now they're all chasing us. <laughs> well, that's the, the dangers of starting like this. I mean, the entire point of starting this, this was going to be research for this area to figure out what the risks are and how to proceed. But, uh... I think we figured out what the risks are. The risks are these guys all deciding to be jerks. <laughs> Fair enough. So, I mean, we're going to need to retreat. There we go. We successfully retreated. And they're marching in over here. We can't retreat any further. We can't recruit these mercs. But, uh... That's kind of the point of these research starts. Of course, this research start became a little bit more of a research start because we were figuring out what was going on with 1.2 as well. But this sort of danger of this kind of war, that's the reason why I do these starts before I do an actual an actual game of them, so that I know kind of what I'm looking out for in the early game. Now, of course, we could also start over over here in, like, Axum in this area over this way, and that's likely what I would end up doing in reality. But for now, I started over here, and uh, I'll maybe try it over here in a different, uh, in a different 
scouting start. That's uh, not really a good term. But we learned what the danger of starting over here is. We also learned what the change is in 1.2 Cicero is. Forgot the name for a moment there. 1.2 Cicero. So that's excellent. I think I've learned all that I'm going to from this particular playthrough, though. So, uh, not really a playthrough at all. From this, per from this particular start. So I'm going to go ahead and stop here. And uh, you will eventually be seeing more Imperator on my channel. You'll probably be seeing an Ethiopia Mega Campaign at some point in the near-ish future. And that's going to take a while. But until then, you can subscribe for more, and I will see you all next time.